Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is Maggie. I'm a third year medical student, a former professional MCAT tutor, and I scored a 526 on my exam when I sat for it in January of 2021, which was almost a 30 point increase. It was a 20, 28 point increase from where I first started on my first diagnostic exam. Today, I wanna make a video about some of the best things that I did to actually see that score increase. There are some people that are just gonna take their first practice exam and it's gonna be like a 510 or a 512 and they don't have that far to go. So while it's impressive that those people make a 520, I think that a bigger score increase from where you started is what a lot of people actually need when they start in the 480s or the 490s. So if that's you, I sympathize with you and these are the four things that I think help see that 30 point increase. The first thing that I did was a high yield content review. And I really don't think it matters too, too much like what program you get. When I was studying for the MCAT, I did one of the like big box programs. And actually one of the weak points that gets pointed out about this program is the content guide. It's very short, it's not Kaplan books, giant. It was like a very thin content book and every topic that it went over, it went over in like bare bones detail. And people knock this about the program, but I actually thought it was really helpful and it inspired me and John to make our high yield ebook because I don't think that if you memorized all of the Kaplan books that you would necessarily score like a perfect score on the MCAT. There's so many other factors and I think that content is one of the like lower down on the list of things that you need to score well on the MCAT. So if you are choosing to do a high yield content review, of course you could go with me and John's or you could go with any of the other content books. What I'm saying is don't bury your nose in that book the whole time and neglect doing your practice questions and your strategies and all the other things that are actually going to help increase your score. Yes, you have to know things for the MCAT, many things actually, but you do not have to know everything. And the questions on the MCAT are gonna be worded in a way that are not straightforward. They are not Anki cards. So you maybe need to know this much content to answer the question, but you have to actually get to the point where you understand that that's what the question is asking. Which leads me into my next point. After a relatively short high yield content review, the next thing I made sure to prioritize was questions. I did every bit of questions I could get my hands on. I highly recommend doing all the AAMC practice tests. And if you are bad at a certain subject, Go ahead and buy the Q packs for that too. UWorld is another great resource, but do as many questions as you can that are high quality and reflect the double AMC style. The reason why doing practice question is so important is because one, it shows you your weak points and the content that you don't know, assuming that you do a good review, which when I say any time on this channel that you need to do practice questions, or if John says that, we mean you need to do practice questions and review them thoughtfully. So if you do that, then you will see content gaps where you need to go back and relearn those things. And it will also teach you how to take the test and think through the questions in a double AMC style. What I call this is strategies and what we call this on the channel is strategies. We have a whole strategies playlist that just teaches you how to take the exam. I cannot stress this enough. The questions are not Anki cards. That's why if you memorize the entire Kaplan book set, you still might not score that well on the MCAT because you might not understand the logic behind the question. And I kind of gave a spoiler to my next two points, but to recap so far, a high yield content review, no matter where that's coming from, don't spend all of your time on content review. Next, do as many high quality questions as you can and review them. The next thing that I did was prioritize strategies. I can't tell you how many times, especially when I'm on the other side of it and I'm tutoring students, I will see students get tripped up on questions that I know that they know that science, but they do not understand that the question is asking about that science because it is said in a convoluted way, or they don't understand that they don't actually need to know whatever the question is talking about or whatever the passage is talking about. All they need to know is this little basic science that's kind of embedded in the way that the question is asked. So my top strategies, if you guys are gonna go on our channel and watch our strategies playlist, flow charting is so high yield, simplifying the question still is so high yield. And then there are some other like non-negotiables, like understanding the timing of the test and making sure that you don't end up with one minute left on the test and two passages to go. So I highly prioritize those and that has paid off even when I've done step one and now that I'm studying for step two as well, which are the tests you take in medical school. The last thing that I really did is focus on my weak points. 
And this is something I think everyone would be like, yeah, I'm focusing on my weak points or whatever. They like know that that's what they're supposed to do. But in practice, it's actually a lot harder because what we want to see when we're sitting down and taking a practice exam or a passage, we want to see our score go up. And if our score goes up, then we feel like we're getting better. And that may be the case, but a good score doesn't teach you anything. And I need you to really internalize that. If you're getting all of the questions right on a practice passage, that was almost a waste of time. I hated cars so bad, but I did it the most because I knew I sucked at it and it was painful and I wanted to do psych host passages so bad. So I only allocated like maybe 10 or 15% of my study time over the course of however many months I was studying to psych -Soch. And I ripped through CARS passages and CP passages because that was just my worst one and I hated it. And I would get low scores and it's demoralizing but you have to do it. I'm going through the same thing right now. While I'm studying for, I take my internal medicine shelf tomorrow and like I so badly just wanna do the questions that I already know. I so badly wanna get questions about heart failure or something that like I understand, but instead I am forcing myself to do every question on heme onc that that you world will give me. And I hate it, I'm doing really bad, but I know that it's going to pay off because it does me no good to keep doing questions on things that I already know. If you start getting a ton of psych -soch questions right, stop studying psych -soch. you got it. Move on to something else. Because the last thing you wanna do is sit down to take your real MCAT and that be the first time that you're forced to do the subjects that you're bad at. And literally everyone says when they leave the MCAT, they're like, it was full of stuff that I don't know. I scored so bad. Everyone feels that way. So don't let yourself be that person. Go ahead and study the hard stuff. Notice I did not say the low yield stuff. There is stuff that's hard and low yield. I'm talking about you lenses and optics. There's stuff that's low yield and it's hard. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the hard high yield stuff. Michaelis Minton kinetics, stuff like that. So prioritize your weak points, prioritize your strategies, do a high yield content review and do as many questions as you can. This is how I increased my score and ended up making a 526. It sucked, it was hard, I felt dumb every day and that's how you should feel when you're growing. Growth is not comfortable, but this period of your life is only temporary. So put the work into it because this test is unfortunately a huge barrier to becoming what you wanna be in the future if you can't pass it. All right guys, that's all I have for you today. Make sure to hit like and subscribe, leave a comment down below of what you want to see next. Check out all the links in our description below and good luck studying. Bye!